In this video, I'm going to show you how you can make a view model kind of like this in your Roblox game. So it'll look like this for the player, but then on the server, it will look completely normal, like a normal tool that they're holding. But the client, it'll look like an actual like item that they're holding. All right. So for this uh, view model script, I'm going to be using a first person script that I already have made in a previous tutorial. I'll link that in the description. Um, and also, if you don't want to watch the tutorial, that's fine. All you have to do is go into starter scripts, put a local script in here. I'll put a link to the code for the first person in the description as well. But you literally just want to go to that link. You want to copy everything. So copy everything into this like that. And then that should work for your first person. You can see I can walk around and stuff and it works. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a new script in the starter character scripts. Uh, I'm going to call this tool carrier or something like that. And I'll also put a link to this script in the description, but I'm going to go ahead and type it out on this video. So in here, we're going to go ahead and get the run service again, get service, get service, run service. And then we're going to get the view models folder. So in replicated storage, we're going to need to create a folder in here called view models, view models like that. So we're going to get that folder. So we're going to say view models folder. Is going to equal game dot storage dot view models and then we're going to get the camera equals game dot workspace dot current camera and then we're going to get the player game dot players dot local player we'll get the character which is going to equal player dot character and since this is a character script we don't need to add the or player dot character added stuff we don't need to add this since this is a character script and it will only run whenever the player spawns it all right now down to the settings so in here we say local smooth equals 50 we'll say local bob speed equals 1.5 local bob distance equals uh, 0.1 local bob walk multi is going to equal three and then local walk velocity threshold equals nine local sway speed is going to equal 1.1 local sway distance is going to equal 0.07 local sway walk multi is going to equal 2 all right down here we're going to say local tool equals nil local view model equals nil and then we'll say local target c frame equals c frame not new and now we can start working on the functions for this. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a function called get target C frame. And in this function, we're going to say local Bob pause, local sway pause. And then we're going to say if character dot primary part dot assembly linear velocity dot magnitude is greater than or equal to the walk uh, velocity threshold. We're going to say Bob pause equals math dot sign and then we're going to tick and then we're going to multiply that tick by the uh parentheses and then say bob speed times bob walk multi and then we're going to go outside of both those parentheses and multiply it by bob distance and we're going to do something very similar to the sway position so we're going to go ahead and copy this line like this paste it down here instead of bob speed we'll say sway speed Instead of bob walk multi, we'll say sway walk multi. Instead of bob distance, we'll say sway distance. And then down here, we'll say else. And we can just copy these two lines that we just created and just modify them a little bit. So instead of having these parentheses in this math.sign function, we can just go ahead and just put bob speed here and then sway speed there as well. And then we're going to return camera.c frame times view model dot configuration which we will set this up in a second don't worry about it. get attribute offset plus vector3 dot new zero bob pause and then sway pause so that's a oh but I need zero so I will we'll set this up in a minute you don't worry about that and then we're gonna go character dot descendant added connect function and then we're going to call the descendant t 
So what we're going to be doing in this descendant added function is we're going to check basically when a tool is equipped by the player. So we're going to say if t is a tool and t does not equal no, then we'll say tool equals t view model equals view models folder index that tool dot name okay tool dot name and then we're going to go ahead and clone that we'll say view model dot parent equals the camera and then we'll say view model dot name is going to also equal view model dot name and then we're going to add a view model string onto it and then we're going to go ahead and say view model dot primary part pivot to uh, get target C frame time C frame dot new zero negative two zero and what this is doing right here is whenever we first equip it so this is whenever we are first equipping an item so we're taking the view model from the replicated storage and then we're taking that putting it onto the player's camera so only the player can see it and then we're putting it slightly below the player so that whenever they do equip it, it'll look like they're pulling it up out of like their pocket or something. And it isn't just like instantly flashing on a screen. So that's what that's gonna do. And then there's one thing we need to do is the tool will still be uh, visible to the player. So to get rid of that, we're gonna say four underscore P and I pairs T and get descendants do, we're gonna say if P is a base part, then the uh, p.local transparency modifier is going to equal one and then this is where if there's something that's not invisible for you you could also add more stuff in here so let's say you had a surface light on your part like for a flashlight for example then we could say else if p is a surface light that's a surface light then we can say p.brightness equals zero or you could just say p.enabled equals false if you had a flashlight for example all right now we're going to check whenever the player un uh, whenever the player unequips a tool so we'll say character dot descendant removing next function and then we're going to take in t again we're going to say if t equals tool so if the, if the descendant that was taken from the player is the tool that they had equipped then we'll say tool equals nil we'll view model destroy destroy the view model we'll set the view model equal to nil as well and then if you have a sound you could also play it here as well all right so now we're going to go into the run service we're going to say run service now render stepped connect function take in the delta time and we're going to say if if a view model then target c frame is going to equal get target c frame and then we're going to say view model dot primary part dot c frame equals view model dot primary part dot c frame pull in lerp and we're gonna say target c frame and then delta time time smooth so this is going to animate the item that you're holding so it'll be a little bit like delayed from where you're looking and stuff like that but it'll make it feel a lot more like immersive and not just like it's stuck to your screen like a like an image or something so that's it for the script, but we have to set up our tool properly. So I'm going to go ahead and set up a view model just to show you guys and so you're able to actually see it. So let's say you got like this flashlight off the toolbox or something. So for this, I'm going to go ahead and delete this well constraint. Um, it has a handle in here with the uh, little light in it as well. So usually you can have you can have things with a bunch of parts in them it'll still work fine but what i'm going to do is i'm going to group this as a model okay and then you want to call you want to make sure that the tool is the same name as your view model so if you have a flashlight you want it to be spelled the exact same as your tool that you have so we'll get a flashlight like this and then i'm just going to make it so all the meshes are under the model and then i'm going to make sure one of these is called handle and under the handle i'm going to make sure that uh, it can't collide or anything like that, but I want to make sure that it's anchored. So you only want to anchor the handle and really nothing else. Because what we're going to do is we're going to weld everything else to the handle. So what you can do is you could just weld everything to the handle. And then the next thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and add some configuration 
into here and what i do is or what i did is i just added attributes onto it so we're going to go ahead and add an attribute on this name it offset like that and this is going to be a c frame value save that and this is just going to take some testing you can run your game and then just change this attribute while you're in game and then it'll move it and adjust it you know dynamically and stuff like that for now i'm just going to copy over some values that i got before and you could if it's like facing the wrong way you could still fix that too with the orientation which is nice so i'm just going to paste some values in there like that and that should be it for the view model if it's broken i will um i guess put that in right now uh, me fixing it so make sure in your view model you set the primary part of it to the handle which I don't think it really needs to be named handle, but I just call it that. That's where your player is going to hold it, basically. All right, and then tools are going to work basically the same as any other tool that you've had before. Uh, you can keep them the exact same as a normal tool. You don't have to worry about it. So for that, I'm just going to take I'm just going to take a tool from one of my other games. So, and here it is. So the flashlight is, I mean, backwards on my screen right now. Yeah, and then it'll look the same. So if we go to home up here and then go to server, you'll see if I go over to my character that I'm holding it just like the flashlight normally as if it were just like a normal tool. And also if it is like um, messed up like backwards like this, you can go ahead and go into the workspace while you're still in the client, go into the workspace, go under the camera, and then you'll see the view model right there. You can go into configuration and then just change it right here. So I set that to zero and then it, you know, uh, moved. So if I set this to 90, it'll face the right way. Okay, now there's one last thing that I want to talk about in this, and that's scripting. So if you're going to script like something like a flashlight, you're probably going to need a server side and a client script for this to work because um, the view models cannot be accessed on the server. So if you have like an animation or you want to have a light turning on or off, you need to update it both on the client and on the server. So for this um, flashlight, for example, I have a server script and then a client script. So in the server script, I literally just check whenever the tool is activated. And then I just um, set the service light to enabled like that. And then on the client, I check whenever it's activated. I have to go into the camera find the view model and then uh, adjust it from there so it is a little bit more complicated to script these things but it should work completely fine all right that's it for this video again i have all of the scripts in the description so you can just copy and paste them um, it should look pretty similar to how this one looks it might look a little bit weird whenever like you start walking and stuff like that but it should look decent enough to wear it's passable, I guess.